Well, Holly Dagres is a Middle East analyst and also creates the weekly newsletter, The Iranist, who joins us now live from Jerusalem. Holly Dagres, thanks for joining us. Uh, so what did you make of Rouhani's slightly conciliatory tone that protests would be allowed, but they must not turn violent? Well, um, President Hassan Rouhani's speech was not very much different from President Mohammad Khatami's speech during the 1999 student uprisings. He did understand the people's grievances and said that they could be um, that they're allowed to protest, but not to destroy um, government property. At the same time, he didn't really address the Iranian people's grievances, which was the economy, the corruption, and whatnot. So it's really hard to say what that really means and what that translates, because right now we haven't been given an option of what's going to happen next. And is that sort of a disconnect at the heart of this? Because we had the Interior Minister over the weekend with a more hardline uh, message to the protesters. We've got the protesters themselves calling for the downfall of Rouhani, calling for the downfall of Khomeini, and calling for the Shah to come back. Is it the fact that there's so many disparate parts that makes this so hard to see where it's going to go? Absolutely. And I think what's really important is this is a leaderless movement. Um, it started on Thursday in Mashhad as an anti-Rouhani protest that was led by hardliners, hardliners being the conservatives that are anti-Iran deal, anti-Western um, relations and whatnot. And they had no idea that this protest that they were leading was going to spread the way it did and actually um, not to their benefit. And it's actually considered one of the largest um, protests since the 2009 post-election protest known as the Green Movement. And so this controlled fire has essentially turned into a wildfire. And for the Iranian government themselves, they're, they're, it's so hard to really pinpoint how, how to react to something that has no leadership like the 2009 Green Movement, where they could at least po put the blame on the presidential candidates, Mir Hussein Mousavi, his wife's Zahra Ranavar, and the other candidate, Mehdi Karabi. Like, who who can they exactly go after? So there's been a lot of finger-pointing, and of course the blame has also been on the West and foreign agents and whatnot. I mean, the pointing uh, fingers at the West is what often happens with, with these things. But uh, there are some analysts who are saying that the anger on the streets is not been seen since the 1979 revolution. From those you've spoken to inside Iran, Holly, are you getting the sense that this is a, a serious movement which is going to gather pace? It's really hard to say. I think um, if the Iranian government really wants to take this on, they need to address the Iranian people's concerns. At the same time, we know that the Iranian government has a history of cracking down on protests like this. And while um, we have seen some arrests and some um, aggressiveness on part of security forces and plainclothes men and the besiege, um, you're not seeing that kind of type of footage that you were seeing in 2009. And historically, something like this is ten, tends to get um, tends to over time fizzle out. So I think probably in a week's time, we'll, we won't be hearing much from this protest. Uh, and you mentioned addressing the Iranian people's uh, concerns. What do you think the government could do in the short term? I mean, obviously there are long systemic problems, but in the short term, to kind of assuage the fears of the people on the street, what do you think they could do? Well, for starters, they need to really address the corruption and the fact that a lot of Iranian government officials are taking money that belongs rightfully to the Iranian people, maybe a, and um, sentencing people to, um, excuse me, um, taking people to court. I mean, for starters, they did go after Ahmed Ajad's former vice president last week, but that's just one official. We need to address that. We need to address the economic problems. Yes, sanctions are part of... Um, a lot of the things that the Iranians are upset with, that the Iran deal, while it did provide sanctions relief, it wasn't the kind of trickle-down effect that they wanted. Inflation is a big issue. Unemployment is a big issue. They need to address unemployment by giving new jobs. There's a lot of little things that the Iranian government can do and at least maybe say something about how they're going to do things, and thus far we haven't really been seeing that. Okay. Uh, we have to leave it there. Holly Dagres, the Middle East analyst from the Iranist, thanks so much for joining us.